Um, oh, our master tape. Yeah. Okay. Whenever you're ready, you can start. Okay, so our presenters ready? Please, computers closed, phones put away. Hi, I'm Amanda Fingenthal, and I do my presentation on Shel Silverstein. So, how many of you guys heard of the book The Giving Tree? Yeah. So, I thought a lot of you would. Uh, it's a pretty popular book, and it's actually all, um, by uh, Shel Silverstein, and that's why I named my presentation The Giving Silverstein. So I'm going to start with a quote. <clears throat> uh, so it says, draw a crazy picture, write a nutty poem, sing a mumble grumble song, whistle through your comb, do a loony goony dance, cross the kitchen floor, put something silly in the world that ain't been there before. So I really think this quote represents Shel Silverstein very well because he was a very creative man that put something silly in this world, and it was definitely something that was new. And you will see that throughout the presentation. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Shel Silverstein's life. So he was born September 25, 1930 in Chicago to both his parents, Nathan and Helen Silverstein. Um, he was born during the Great Depression, and that actually did hit his family. So. Um, he did have to go through that his early years of life. However, the one thing that he did discover during that time was that he loved to doodle and loved to be creative. Um, so that's pretty much what got him through this time. Um, and then he also continued doing all this stuff at Roosevelt University, um, where he had a professor that took a huge interest in him. Uh, he was never really good at school. Like, he wasn't very good academically. So it was really cool for him to get a professor that motivated him and saw his talents. Uh, he unfortunately had to put his life on hold when he, got, when he got drafted for the Korean War. So in the Korean War, he started to draw cartoons for a newspaper called Stars and Stripes. Um, and I want to show a couple of the cartoons just so you get an idea of what his cartoons look like. Uh, after the Korean War, he continued drawing cartoons for Playboy. Um, as he moved up with Playboy, he got to travel around and create illustration travel journals. And then, as well as that, he liked to write music and perform, um, perform his music and screenwrite. So he did a lot of things with the art. He's very artistic. Um, 1964 is when he actually st started creating children's books. So a couple of his books that he wrote is The Giving Tree where the sidewalk ends, and Runny Babbitt. So um, the first one, The Giving Tree, is kind of like a normal children's book with pictures and text. And then the, next, the last two are poetry books, so it's filled with a bunch of poetry. So that's something that's really cool about him. First, I'm going to talk about The Giving Tree. And The Giving Tree is pretty much about a boy and a tree that are best friends, and they go they go around, they play, um, the boy plays on the tree, he sits under the tree, but as he gets older, he starts to grow away, like grow from the tree, and he doesn't see the tree as much. However, he does come and see the tree when he needs something. So every single time the boy needs something, he takes something from the tree. I'm gonna read a little section of the book. Uh, this is the end, so um, it's when he's older and when he already took a lot of things from the tree, so it says, and after a long time, the boy came back again. I'm sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing at them. I'm too old to swing on the branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I am too tired to climb, said the boy. I am sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I'm just an old stump, I am sorry. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as, she, as much as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down, sit down and rest. And the boy did. And the tree was happy, the end. So, as I read that part, you could probably tell that there's um, a moral in this book. So that's one thing cool about children's literature and just literature in general is that it 
has morals in the book that if you read deeply, you'll be able to find. But the moral that I found is that the one who takes is never the one who is satisfied, but the one who gives is always happy in the end. So the boy who always took from the tree wasn't as satisfied as the tree was. The tree uh, was happy at the end, if you heard what I said. It said, and the tree was happy. It also talks about unconditional love. So even though the boy continued to take and take from the tree, the tree still loved the boy and still wanted to see the boy. So a couple of uses in the classroom. So uh, one thing that you could do is you could have a picture of two apples and then have students write in one of the apples one time they received something and how that made them feel and one time that they gave something and how that made them feel. Also, you could have kids trace pictures of their family's hands and write one time that they gave or received something and have them cut out the hands and then have them make a tree. Um, so that would be kind of like the giving tree. Um, next, I want to talk about the two poetry books. Um, so first, Where the Sidewalk Ends is, um, it takes you into kind of like a magical world where things that aren't normal in this world are extremely normal in that world. So I want to read a little section of each of these just because they're so different. But where the sidewalk ends. All right, so this poem is called Jimmy Jet and his TV set. So I'll tell you a story of Jimmy Jet, and you know what I'll tell you is true. He loved to watch TV almost as much as, almost <coughs> as much as you. He watched all day, he watched all night, till he grew pale and lean from the early show to late night show and all the shows between. He watched till his eyes were frozen wide and his bottom grew into his chair and his chin turned into a turning dial and antennas grew out of his hair and his brains turned into TV tubes and his face to a TV screen and two knobs saying Bert and Flores grew with his ears, where his ears had been. And he grew a plug that looked like a tail so we plugged in little Jim. And now instead of watching TV, we all sit around and watch him. So as you can tell, that's kind of like a silly poem. Uh, and it's nothing normal that would happen in this world. So it's just for, it's just, it will spark creativity in kids. Um, and then I'm going to talk about Bunny or Runny Babbitt. So uh, this book is also, also very creative because it has reverse wordplay. So kind of like the runny babbit instead of bunny rabbit, it switches around different letters. And I'm gonna read a little section of this book too. It's called The Funny Family. Runny fat a hamily. Matter of fact, he had a southern and two bristers. A dummy and a mad. His mama fed him merit kilk and parrot sigh and such. And all of them were happy in their cozy honey bunch. Those books are, this poem is actually kind of hard to read just because of the reverse wordplay. Um, it's very creative. Um, so a couple um, of uses in the classroom that you can do is you could have kids make their own character and have them do reverse wordplay and create a poem. Or you can just have them create a poem of some type, something that didn't happen in this, like something that's not normal in this world. And so some uses for poem poetry and the uh, that it for the purpose of it is to spark creativity um, for children to relate for the rhythm of the poems that's something that kids learn um, it fosters social emotional learning and it also increases vocabulary I'm going to end my presentation by saying the purposes of children's literature so children's later literature shows an appreciation for heritage and, and helps kids foster that. It develops emotional intelligence. It develops creativity. It also develops growth and personality, growth and social skills, and it increases vocabulary. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, here's my works cited page. He has such a fascinating. Yeah. He, he is a, a strange man. Yeah.